The Memorial Pegasus Museum is dedicated to the men of the 6th British Airborne Division and focuses on the capture of the British at Ranville and the various missions for the division on June 6, 1944. The division commanded by Major General Richard Gell was composed of paratroopers and glider-borne troops transported in Horsa and Hamilcar gliders. The main mission of the division was to halt the eastern flank of the evasion forces in order to prevent German counterattacks coming from the east. And their most famous mission today was the capture of the Pegasus Bridge, of course named back in 1944, the Randville Bridge. After landing in horse gliders only meters from their objectives, but more on their mission in another video. Today we are going to have a look at the museum. The museum was opened in 2000, but before that it was originally located on the other side of the channel and was called the Airborne Forces Museum. This museum opened in the 1970s and I actually visited the original museum in the 1990s and it was a nice humble little museum. But when the bridge was getting too small for modern road traffic, there was talk about the demolition of the original Pegasus Bridge and there was talk of wanting to save it as a memorial. But it didn't look good and it was probably going to be scrap metal. Mantle one of the most significant monuments of the Second World War. Capturing Pegasus Bridge in northern France was crucial to the success of the D-Day landings in 1944. But historical sentiment has not been enough to save it as Michael Nicholson now reports. For 50 years, Pegasus Bridge has been synonymous with British bravery, but it's both a legend and a hazard, declared unsafe and unworkable. And this morning it was raised for the very last time. In Normandy today, the oxyacetylene cutters manage what the Germans failed to do a half a century ago. Saturday. Yes. But there are many who want to preserve it as a monument here or in England, like actor Richard Todd, who as a lieutenant was among those who first crossed it, and Madame Gomre who watched them come. England is the place for it to go to rest. England is where it must be buried and glorified forever. It's happening now, today, the, the, the demolition of the bridge. If they could only have left it another eight months for the 50th anniversary when thousands of people would be coming here, so they could have been in situ for that. It's a bit insensitive, I think, to take it now. They left the school children out of class for a practical lesson in living history, and so too came many of those who were part of it and remember that night in June. Today is not the longest day, but it's as sad as day. Of course, and I have a big uh, A bridge too old, too weak for the juggernauts, too narrow for the cargo ships, and like so much that was once thought worth fighting for, soon perhaps consigned to the scrap heap. A rusty relic that was once a symbol of heroism when British troops crossed it, fought for it, and renamed it in their honor. Michael Nicholson, News at 10, Pegasus Bridge, Normandy. And so it was demolished on that day in 1994. But the entire bridge ended up in a field and luckily sit in that field for years, and with the actions of French politician and World War II French resistance fighter Ramon Trebelet and the D-Day commemoration committee, the bridge was bought. The bridge would be restored and talks about opening up a new museum began. The original museum would close in 1997 and three years later the new museum would open its doors to the public. The museum has one exhibition hall and an outside park with a few outside buildings and just like the airborne museum you need to think about bringing an umbrella if it's raining. The main building and four smaller outside buildings display several hundreds of historical objects and photos. Main attraction of the museum are several vehicles, the original Pegasus bridge and a horse glider replica. The replica looks a bit bulky than the original thing and that's probably because it's an outside display and it needs to survive the outside weather, but it will give you an accurate size indication. The other exhibitions are nicely lit in a classic modern design and it has some nice diorama work all in 135 scale, showing the two bridges of the main mission and all the information displayed is in French and English. Back outside you can also find an M16 half-track, some guns and the only original Centaur tank left in the world. 
and I did an entire video about this tank, so have a look in the description below for that video. The first thing you will notice outside is the original Pegasus bridge and it's great that this piece has been saved, but it's merely here as a static memorial and I feel like it's a bit of a missed opportunity, they could have built it up with some trenches and displayed the actual situation during World War II, but that's just me. Next to that you can find a Bailey Bridge and the Horsa Replica. Some, sa some smaller buildings can be found here with information on the Bailey Bridge and the Horsa Glider, but that would include your visit. So is this museum actually worth your time and money? And this is of course all opinion based, but I would say yes. The museum focuses only on the one event and doesn't have the big appeal like the bigger museums in the area. But that makes it special. The Pegasus glider landing is a fascinating point in the first minutes of D-Day. And that's why I would highly recommend it. It's one euro cheaper than most museums in the Normandy area, but for the full visitor information I would recommend you check out their site. I hope you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below if you visited the Pegasus Bridge or the museum or both. If you want to support the channel think of buying me a coffee or check out the new merch. Have a great weekend and see you in the next one.